I decided that I'm going to do a short video on uh, my extraterrestrial experiences. Um, oh, there's so much I could do. I just get I just done a couple of images I drew just to show some things. Um, I'll probably add to this video later and put do some more drawings. But just I'll use what I got right now. Uh, so I'll go through a few of them. So much to go through. So here's a picture. Hang on, which one will I go for? Okay, I'll start with the amphibian uh, alien reptile kind of thing. It was these are the supposedly our ancestors. They they lived on this world a long time ago. Uh, they left uh, during a mass extinction event. They thought that the Earth was sterilized and completely dead. Life did survive and, and evolved again. Uh, they left the planet. They couldn't live on the planet anymore. Uh, they and then ended up. I stayed in the solar system for a little while, and then they they went really far away to find a home world, and they made it. They survived the long trip, and they forgot about who who they were, where they came from, and then they became aware of this planet again, and that they came from this planet because of all the things going on in this planet. So you know, it's a long story. I've seen it all in my movie. I can talk for hours on this stuff, but um, they came to me uh, when I was very young uh, with a message, and they showed me some things. And I'll show you, just get some examples of, okay, so what, are, I'm going to refer to a video game series called Mass Effect. Now, I don't know whether this is some freaky coincidence, there's too many coincidences for this to be, there's, there's more than coincidence to this. There's too many uh, similarities between Mass Effect and my experiences and my memories. Uh, so I'll introduce you to what's called a Krogan. Here's a Krogan. Now, notice he looks frog-like, or toad-like, like an aggressive toad. Well, he looks not identical, but it's similar to this uh, toad, this amphibian cross-reptile kind of species that evolved here, our ancestors, who lived in here a long time ago. And they were very savage and warlike, and they pretty much acted a lot like a Krogan acts in, in Mass Effect. Uh, there were... Uh, very known for being very violent, they had a, b a bad reputation. No one trusted them. No one, they, no one thought they were safe near them. And they exp wanted to explain to me that they've just been misunderstood. That they're not. They have no violent intentions toward mankind. Uh, they just wanted a claim that they have on this world to be recognised. They don't want to take this planet off us, but they want to at least have a say in, in matters and some kind of role in in this world. Um, anyway, um, they. Explain to me how they, they've they got this violent reputation. They explain to me why they've got this reputation and how they just evolved in, in an aggressive kind of scenario with, with uh, they evolved around certain strong emotions and instincts uh, that are different to us mammals. Uh, a lot of primitive evolutionary stuff in the early reptile evolution that happened. So they, they would have uh, evolved, uh, they, they seem to be something like... Uh, they are an amphibian who start who they were somewhere along the lines of evolving into a reptile, somewhere along that kind of evolution, and and that's where they like evolved to to like bipedal kind of uh, intelligent creatures, and they were they were very warlike. They warred for a long time, they decimated themselves, and they are highly ritualistic, highly instinctive, highly aggressive, uh, and violent, and um. They, they, they communicate a lot through body language and postures and stuff like that. So, uh, submissive and aggressive kind of postures. They had this, this hierarchy was a big thing with them, and um, they wanted. Me, they showed me how they they have families and children. They take care of their children just like we do, and they have their own children and stuff like. That. It's a bit different than ours, but we they still care for their children. They wanted to show me that, and they showed me their their home world. That they that they had they had found for themselves. They showed me a, a bunch of stuff. I said in my movie. So anyway, here's a, here's a Krogan picture. Uh, here's another picture of a toad. So compare the Krogan to a toad. They look similar. Uh, so try and imagine like a, a little bit like a Krogan, a little bit like a toad, a little bit like a reptile, and and merge it all, mix it all up into like a uh, a humanoid kind of form. It's kind of like, it's hard to explain, but it was kind of like a combination of all those things. They look like they were very very ugly looking. They they had all these bulges all over them. They were very muscular, 
Um, I wasn't sure whether they, these bulges were muscul muscles or fat. I think they were muscles. Um, or maybe a bit of muscle and fat. But they, they had a completely different format to their body than us. But they were bipedal like us. They had you know the same arms and legs and all that kind of stuff. But they were very different. And most differently is in their behavior. Now, they, they have some of our primitive instincts that we still retain today as humans. But... Uh, they evolved on along a very different path uh, and strongly evolved around uh, amphibian reptile kind of instincts. That's where they get all their aggression and hierarchies and um, strong instinct driven stuff from. So what's next? Now, here's, here's just here. This is a Solarian from Mass Effect 2. Now this is, this is bizarre too because more than a, Kro a Krogan, uh, the matriarch I said, who, the very long-lived matriarch I said, who wa always wore a hooded robe, uh, she was one of the political authorities. And there were, there were he's and she's. Most species were in dual sex. Some, some weren't, but most were. And th this species looked almost identical to a Solarian like this. Uh, she wasn't this color. She was, she was blue, a bluish-gray color and darker. Uh, but the top of their head, those two little notches Solarians have, they didn't have that. They were like a Solarian, but they didn't have those notches. I could never properly see the top of their head because she always wore a uh, a hooded robe. But um, I, I saw, I didn't directly see others. I saw, I saw like, uh, what would you call videos of others as well. But I never, I, the only one I actually spoke to was this, uh, this matriarch, long-lived matriarch. So the, the top of their head wasn't the same, but the rest of their head was almost identical. And the whole body of a Solarian was practically identical to, to them too. It's just the top of their head wasn't like that. They, they had a bigger top of their head, uh, not like a grey alien top of, but they were bigger. had a bigger top of their head and they didn't have, it doesn't split in half like that, that I could see anyway. And now the thing is, in Mass Effect, Solarians are the shortest lived species. They're very, they, they're like, uh, there's a meme, they're like, they're like a little nerd or anything, something like that. Whereas, uh, they're like a little young nerd who dies at a young age in Mass Effect. Well, that's a total, op well, they look similar. They're, they're, their identity in Mass Effect was like polar opposite, exactly opposite to what, to my experience of the species that looks just like them. Um, they lived for, they said, 3,000 years. I don't know if that was in Earth years or whatever, but they lived a lot longer than every, than all these other species. And and they were very, they were, a lot of them were, were very old, very wise, very intelligent. Uh, wisdom was, was the key thing about them. They were well respected and, and well known. They had a lot of power in the galaxy because they were able, able to consolidate a lot of power because of their age. And um, they had a, a lot of, uh, I was just, uh, advantages because of their age and their disposition. They were one of the oldest and wisest species and they had a lot of political power. Now this was the matriarch that I that I spoke to over and over again and she was one of the high, highest ranking political authorities I, I spoke to, ever spoke to. Um, and she looked just like a Solarian only uh, just the top of the head was different and the whole Solarian identity was polar opposite. Instead of being the shortest lived, they were the oldest lived. Instead of being a, an inexperienced little geek, or nerd, I should say, uh, they were very wise and, and old. So, what's next? Okay, okay. these here. This is the closest... I, I've looked a lot to try to find images that look similar to different kind of aliens, because a lot of these uh, aliens in my, my story... I've not. I've never seen anything like them. I have to find something that's a close approximation. But these ones are, are really close. Um, I've said that the thirteen thousand years ago, these aliens who came down, they meddled with mankind and they gave man ideological ideological viruses at a critical time and shit and, and meddled and shit. They look almost identical to these guys here. And if you notice, I said that they're like they're sim They're not a grey alien, but they their faces look similar to grey, like an angry grey alien with like a bony. Uh, face with a uh, defined features and it looks a lot like look like these guys. Uh, suspiciously a lot like these guys. And so imagine like the got aliens like this, only they're they're massive giants. 
and they've got they they're not skinny skinny and frail like a grey alien. They they're muscular and hunched and hunchbacked. So imagine giants like like with a head like that with a body like a like a almost like a cave troll like a skinny tr cave troll. And that was pretty much the, the same color with their skin as well. And they're always struggling in, in our environment, hot footing it from one enclosure to the next. They live in their own enclosures, must be with their own air and maybe even their own gravity or something, I don't know. But they always seem to struggle in our gravity, our air, their whole, our whole environment. They, they disliked our, our environment and they struggled in it. And they're the ones that meddled and caused all these problems in the first place. And it looked just like them. Only they're only obviously the bodies of these you can see that little bit of their bodies they're like skin skinny typical type of greys but they were nothing like that their bodies were nothing like that but their heads were very much like that so what's next um, okay I set uh, uh, the amphibian okay I didn't finish doing that uh, here is uh, the the ships and everything the of the amphibian reptile ish aliens that came from this world. So on the right you see that what their ships look like. And I said they're like globular shapes on top of each other. And the central area didn't have any flat line or anything between it to split it in half. It was a whole encasement. It was the biggest encasement of it. And as you got further up and further down, they would get smaller and smaller. It's a yeah you know, these are all these drawings that I'm doing they're they're really crude. They're not exact. They're just really crude uh quick drawings I just did. A short time ago so you anyway, know that's a, a basic idea of what their ships look like and everything everything they had was like a really an ugly kind of brown their, their bodies were brownish everything was like a shade of brown kind of ugliness and yeah the, it, it was according to human standards it was very ugly so on, on the left was uh what their buildings look now look like now i should add that their their buildings weren't this fat they're actually more skinnier um but as you can see, what I said, the same globular technology, uh, like pancakes or glob globules of, on stacking on top of each other, with a t with a tower on the top. Um, this is really crude. Just remember, it's really crude. Uh, but um, there was these capsules, all, all scattered all over the place around around the edges, of the, the externals of the buildings which appeared to be like homes or something like, I don't know, so homes, buildings, whatever, but they had these, in, these capsules that would just, uh, that would be like attached all over, all over like, like a, and it was like a, like a beehive kind of thing, basically. And there's just a picture of what their uh, approximation of what their home world would look like. It was just a barren, ugly desert also of a lot of brownness and stuff, you know, just a brown kind of desert rocky desert kind of thing there's all the ugly shades of the same color but um well, ugly to our standards anyway I wouldn't, i'm not calling it ugly because you know different standards and stuff but different um reasons for appreciating different things but um yeah that's what, what it kind of looked like so what's next um okay next i go to i, I mentioned that i, I spoke to a gray alien leader one of the the tall the taller species the the one of the master uh races of gray in the gray space uh the taller ones and uh i, I struggled to find uh, an image of what these guys look like because all these gray, i looked on google images and they look nothing like nothing like anything that i've seen uh so you know, well first i'll go uh to where i here is an image when i said i I saw uh, Andromeda and the Milky Way and stuff. Well, what I did in, um, when I first saw this stuff, uh, I saw uh, I was in this 3D map on on this panel. I'll get to, I'll show you that panel in a minute. Uh, there's this smallish panel on a uh, like a screen, like a rectangular video screen uh, on this panel, and you could operate it. And um, they showed me. They showed me it, and uh, this was to do with uh, the communication they were having with uh, the very rare communication back and forth over millions of years, uh, communication between uh, the Milky Way and Andromeda. And I saw this map, and this was this is like what the, what the view started off something like this uh, when I be, before I touched it, before I fiddled with it, and it looked it looked kind of like this. Now 
the Milky Way and Andromeda, I don't know if they're on the exact same plane or similar on the same plane, but they seem to be generally around the same plane, uh, the same angle and stuff like that. Not Maybe not identical, but, but similar. Uh, so this is a really crude drawing anyway. Obviously, the, the screen was black, not white, but I had to use white because I didn't have a transparent image, a background for, for one of the images. So, you know, just pretend it's all black and you can see the glow of two galaxies like that. Uh, and then I... I operated the controls for the for the screen and I'll go to the next image and here as I zoomed into uh, Andromeda we, it was the near, I didn't all I know was there was one galaxy nearby and this was the galaxy they were interested in, in communicating with every now and then on a very rare occasion with mes expected messages back and forth over a specific period of time so uh, as I there, there were there are other little ghostly shadowy things around here and there but it was pretty much just uh andromeda and the milky way were the main things but there was a little bit of ghostiness here and there now as i as i zoomed into andromeda i could see over to the left there was left and up a bit uh this is like on a specific angle it's hard because i had to move around on different angles to get the right orientation it was really disorientating to do it um but on the left there was something a little bit like that that a globular ghost uh ghostly cluster of stars it was it was faint but as i got closer to it it become more and more clear and uh as i zoomed into andromeda i could see this and then i paid, it steered my attention over to this over on the side on the left and um i don't i don't know the what the what scientists and astronomers would list if there's something here on according to their maps i've proved them wrong in the past anyway so um, there was just like this ghostly kind of cloud. It wasn't you wouldn't consider it a galaxy, not according to their standards anyway, because a galaxy, a proper galaxy, has a, is a has a spiral and a, and a definite center. Well, this didn't have any kind of center. Now, I've actually in the past I've said this might have been triangulum, but I don't remember there being any triangulum's got a spiral to it, and this didn't have a spiral to it. It looked a lot like this image here on the left, so it might not have been triangulum, but it was on the left, and it was it was closer to the Milky Way than Andromeda. And it was all the way out and left, and it was like a ghostly image that that uh, got more and more uh, brighter as I got closer to it. And I expressed interest in this, and I said, well, "Have you um, tried sending message to here? See, there, is anyone here?" And they said they sent a message a long time ago and never got a reply. And as far as they're concerned, it was just dead, complete. Was, there's nothing living there. And I said, "But like." There might be someone who, uh, who's who. Uh, there might have been a reason why they didn't answer. Maybe they didn't weren't paying attention, or maybe someone's evolved there and 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 and, and is there now? Uh, do you want to send a message there just in case? And they weren't interested. They just they were only interested in uh in the Andromeda, and they explained that it takes a lot of resources. Just check if I'm still recording. Yeah, they they it took them a lot of resources in order to send uh send these messages and and process it. it there was whatever is to do with the messaging back and forth between Andromeda took up a lot of resources, and I think it was to do with sending messages would took up a lot of resources, not not receiving them. Uh, so anyway, um, I I felt pity on this uh, cluster of stars because they've been abandoned. Like no one, there could be they, there could be one species there all by themselves, and they might not even know that any other life exists. That was, that was my concern. Um, I felt lonely for them if anyone was there but they weren't really interested in that but it was quite big it was it was it, it wasn't just a small uh cloud it was it was quite big nowhere near as big as uh milky way and andromeda but it was but it was still quite big so what else have we got okay here is the two galaxies together now they didn't look identical but they looked uh similar they're both spiral kind of galaxies with a with a glowing center basically, um, but they weren't they weren't identical. They look similar. And on the on the panel, on the rectangular panel, was this kind of image of the two galaxies from facing from top. They obviously had some kind of three D uh, model of of both galaxies in in a lot of detail. Uh, so I could see uh, there was a they showed me the the galaxies side by side, and as you can see, the left one would have been. Um, Andromeda and the right one was Milky Way and and 
you can see the, the Andromeda is noticeably smaller than the Milky Way. Now, it might have actually been a little bit smaller than that, than even that, I don't know. I, I tr struggled to get the right size of what it looked like, but it looked to be about two-thirds the size of, as a guess, two-thirds the size of the Milky Way, but it looks similar to that. Similar to that. It's just, this is just a crude uh, representation. And Andromeda was smaller, and this was reaffirmed when um, when the communication happened, and they were explaining that they were intimidated by the size of the Milky Way because we were a lot bigger than them. And, and this wasn't just that; it was that uh, not just we weren't just bigger. We had a lot more life than they did. They didn't have anywhere near as much life in their galaxies that, than, than we did. So there's some kind of conditions between uh, what's going on with how galaxies work is all galaxies are not created equal. There's not an equal amount of life. There's only two galaxies to compare to and there's vastly different amounts of life in between them. So whatever, however that works is they don't, they, they don't have as anywhere near as much life as we do. They've got life in there but just not as, as much, uh, a lot less. And they were intimidated, not just by our size and the fact we got more life, but the fact that we uh, had a lot of wars in the past and they didn't want uh, any kind of uh, problems we had transferring onto them. They had enough to deal with, obviously didn't realise until later uh, that they were, <laughs> they were in perpetual war themselves with at least three sides. Uh, that's, that's all explained in my, in my other videos and my story and stuff like that. But, uh, so I'll just go to something else. Um, that was what the panel looked like. Now here... Let me get it up. There's only one image left I'm going to show. Okay, I'm almost done. This here. Now this, uh, you can see in the center, there's a, a golden uh, rectangular kind of uh, panel. And there's a there's a, a screen in it. That, that's the screen that I saw the, uh, the galaxies side by side in. And that's where I was able to zoom in and out to to see all that cluster, that's what we're talking about that. Now, that screen on the right there, it's facing like on an angle, like a, like an extension kind of TV kind of thing. And this is, look, as you notice, this is, there's not all, all this alien roundness and, and smooth roundness and curves and stuff like that. This stuff had, this was all square and rectangle and stuff. A lot of this stuff was square and rectangle. There were alien ships that were that were like round and stuff like that. Not all of them, but there were alien ships that, that were round and smooth and all that. But all the all the um, computer stuff and everything, it was all rectangular and square. There were square buttons and stuff. There were, there were some round and other shaped things as well and all kinds of stuff. But there was a general theme of square and rectangular shapes, which goes against what a lot of people think. Uh, but, the, but a lot of the, just this golden um, box uh, panel, whatever you want to call it, um, it had a lot of engravements and stuff in it. It wasn't, it didn't, the, the surface had a lot of, uh, smooth roundness and stuff going on, on in it. Um, and there was a ton of buttons and all kinds of shit. I have no idea what they did. Um, but the general shapes of, of all this computer equipment was square or rectangular. Rectangular. So that panel in the middle there is, well, well, is the panel that I saw all this galaxy uh, comparison stuff in. Now, as I said in my story, there was a, a grey alien, uh, a grey leader who was passing by and while well, we were doing stuff on on this panel and he came suddenly and we took the opportunity uh, to engage him about the drone problem. We spoke to him about the great drone problem and he got really upset and pissed off and he accused us of accusing him of being responsible and um, I explained that in my story. But I, I tried really hard to find uh, an image online of this kind of grey that I've, the, these tall greys, even the short ones, they don't look anything, they don't look anything like any, any pictures I can find in Google Images. I'm sure I've, I've seen uh, uh, grey alien images that look a lot like them but not, I can't find any. So the closest I could find was this image of him. Uh, and you can see he's like a, a really dark background of something you can't quite make out. That's what it was like. There was some kind of background there, but it was dark. And he was dark as well, but um, he was lit up by some kind of light in front of him, where, emanating from where the screen was. Some kind of light so that we could see him. 
So he had a lot of shadows and stuff on him. And with eyes like that, they obviously live in some kind of dark environment anyway. So there seemed to be some kind of general dark lighting that they're accustomed to. But he was lit up so that I could see him on the screen. And this is, I, I could only find like a, a charcoal or pencil, charcoal or pencil, whatever it is, uh, image. I had to actually cut out the shape of it to make it look right. Um, but this is the closest approximation to what, what these tall greys look like. Now his head probably would have, the top of his head would have been probably a little bit bigger, not much, but a little bit bigger. But this was generally what they, they look, what he looked like and what they, the, the taller greys looked like. They, they were like seven foot tall or something like that. And um, they weren't extremely frail. They're probably the most, uh, the toughest of all greys. They weren't, they weren't extremely frail like uh, a lot of others are. And they're a lot, they're a lot bigger. They, these were the ones that, these were the boss greys. And in, in the, with our grey type of aliens is, general, not, not always, but generally, the, the bigger you are, uh, the more authority you have in some kind of hierarchy. It's just the way they do things. So this this is like the the panel looks like a panel that um, I spoke to this grey leader in. I I had a uh, the language interface I spoke about. Uh, I I had I had only just recently installed his spoken language into my interface, and I'd, I hadn't used it yet. And uh, those who I was with. Uh, encouraged me to speak to him. They they wanted me to speak to him uh, just one on one, and they encouraged me to to try and use this in just use this language for the first time and just trust trust the language interface to work, and it'll, it'll all come naturally. And it did. And I, I spoke to him. His own language. There's only there was one thing I couldn't pronounce. I think it was like a something similar to to a uh, the pronunciation of the vowel a, and there's some that something that. When I come across it, I didn't think of it until I come across it, uh, and I, I, I paused and I'm like, this isn't something that a human, that I can pronounce. So I tried to, to pronounce something similar and, and I come out as an A. And as far as I could tell, he understood what I was trying to say anyway. But there was some kind of vowel that they can say that we can't. Or at least I wasn't able to anyway. And that was what the, the two panels, the big panel with the, with that, I spoke to the, that we that they and I spoke to that uh, grey leader on, and the little panel where all well, the galaxies and everything was on. So that's a, that's as much for now. Uh, I've got so much stuff, I, uh, other stuff I could do. I might, if I add more later, I'll just add to this video, add on top of this video, and do more di diagrams and stuff like that. So I'm done for now. One more thing I thought I'd add while I was compiling the video. Uh, here's a map of the world. Now, as I said in my story, is that there was an extraterrestrial intervention to cure the corruption on on this world. And it was a dramatic, uh, dramatic solution that would eradicate the corruption of life and, and do a lot of big stuff to this planet. And uh, as I understood, there would be some kind of mass eradication of life on, the, on, on this world. Now, if you, if you look at the world map, you can see there's this bizarre phenomenon in the, the map of the world. is from North Africa, traveling through the Middle East all the way into Mongolia, there's this giant streak of death. And, it, and it's, you can see it at its most prominent uh, in Africa, where it's all green, lush, and then bang, it just suddenly goes dead. Now, no one's ever been able to properly explain this phenomenon, where it came from. Uh... Historical records show that up until several thousand years ago, it was all lush, the entire Middle East, North Africa, all the way to Mongolia, it was, it was all lush and green. And that's why in the Middle East is so full of oil, because oil is, the, is fossil fuel, it's fossils of life. This is, uh, oil is where life has been existing for a very long time. And it's always been lush and green throughout the Middle East, North Africa and all that. And then several thousand years ago, it just... Bang, everything's dead. No one's ever been able to explain why. Now, some uh, ignorant people will say that uh, the, for some reason the climate changed and uh, 
which there's no climate change record uh, to, to prove this in any kind of timing. There's no record of this. This is out of ignorance that people say this, is that the rain just stopped happening along a certain area and it just somehow everything just died off because there was no rain. No, that's not how the climate works. There's a lot, there's a lot to, to dismiss that argument. It's all bullshit. Um, the, it doesn't rain there anymore because there's no life there and there's nothing to retain the moisture. That's why it doesn't rain. It, the, the death of life uh, stopped it from raining. It's not, it doesn't completely doesn't rain. But as you can see, especially in Central and North, Afri North Africa, uh, that really doesn't make sense how there's a, like a sudden life and then there's death. Um, that this actually fits with my story where I said that there's this mass extermination of the corruption of life on the planet. And as I understood it, the, the, the location uh, of mankind that I was interacting with and trying to teach civilization and stuff and the centrality of all the problems happened around somewhere around the Middle East. And this was... Uh, the people I was trying to teach civilization to were white people. I wasn't teaching it to black people, Asian people. There was a certain uh, branch of, of, of humans on this world who were ready for civilization. The rest of them weren't, and they knew this needed to be stayed away from them, live, and live separately, and go your own direction. But there was a certain group of the white race who were ready, who were con uh, considered ready for civilization, and I came into this world to, to, to gently guide them into civilization, into to st a step forward in evolution. And this happened around the Middle East. Now, there is also an, an alien language. Uh, not, not, sorry, not an alien language, a language. I don't know where it came from, but I, 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 there's only one written language I ever knew back in those days, and it, it's all scrambled up in my head what, what it was, but it... It looked a little bit like Arabic. It wasn't Arabic, but it looked a little bit like Arabic in the fact that it has a lot of short and long uh, lines. But it didn't have all the other Arabic symbols and stuff, but it was just similar in that, in that just in that context. Um, I don't know what this language was, where it came from, whether it was a, it was a human language or it was an alien language. Uh, written language was my weak point. I, I didn't learn any uh, written languages, even though... Uh, that I know of, I, I don't know where I learned this written language. Um, it might have been in the the one language that was installed into my language interface because you could install written languages in in, in your interface, but it was uh, it was a lot harder to do and, and it took a lot more to do. Whereas spoken languages, they were they were fairly easy. You, you best to only do one at a time. You could do two or three, but after that, it's a bit of a it, it causes your brain can't process it. But um, written languages were a, a tr struggle, and as I understand I only knew one written language um, I didn't need these written languages I, I just I needed a few key spoken languages that's about it and since I knew one written language is whenever I really needed to do it to write anything down which I didn't have to but if I did uh, I already had one language wherever I got it from I don't know where I got it from but I had the one language that I could write in uh, as for reading uh, there were general uh, generic uh, symbols like arrows kind of things and stuff. I had to learn these symbols because they're not like the this kind of symbols we use on Earth. They had their own kind of format of different kind of symbols. Uh, I had to learn uh, what they mean. Um, there's a whole theme to how these symbols work. So, you know, you learn a few, you start getting the picture of what, what things mean. But there was a whole system that these symbols didn't operate under any kind of language anyway. So these couldn't be trained into a language inter interface at all. Um... These are like universal stuff that you, I just had to learn on my own, and it was a little bit hard at first, but it wasn't. But it wasn't a big deal, just learning the symbols. Um, I don't remember having to read anything in any other languages. Uh, language, most things were in, done in spoken language and stuff like that, so. But anyway, there's a um. A, a, an explanation of the the world map, and where this giant streak of death comes from, according to to. Uh, according to my memories, and it fits with all the historical records. It has no explanation that uh, there was all this lush green life there throughout the throughout the, all these regions that are dead now, and it, it was steadily lush for millions and millions of years, steadily like that, and then, bang, suddenly it's all dead, and no one can explain why. And that fits with my story, is, is this uh, mass eradication of the corruption of life that happened, that that would uh, cure the problem uh, that was caused on this on this world and quarantine it.
and as of as it seems to be the case is they just went on a killing rampage of a, of a lot of stuff and uh, sterilized a large section of this planet where the problem was you know that's all maybe I'll add something else later but I just thought I'd add that for now even though it's not directly related to this video I thought I'd add it anyway all right finishing the video